whole bunch of um, Celtic worship songs. Um, in 91, I did a Celtic worship album, which was really just an experiment, but it became something else. My feelings, there'd be lots of scriptures, but my feelings on worship music was that too, there was too much of one thing. There's lots of songs about loving God, but there wasn't very much in, in the way of questioning or doubt or what's going on, God. And the Psalms are full of that. There were hardly any laments, for instance. And so I, I drew from a lot of the Psalms. But I think the one scripture that um, has stuck with me through everything, not just not just the music, is um, in, a, in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 3 and verse 20, it speaks about God being able to do Im immeasurably more than you can imagine. Now, I've got a wild imagination. I can imagine all kinds of things. And the thought that God can do more than I can imagine gives me a great deal of hope for a limitless source of creativity. So um, I think that is probably transcended into the music somewhat but I was in pretty bad shape and I was touring stupid stupid tours I mean you know I'd be playing two months in Australia and flying right back to the UK and having one night and then going to Germany for three days then doing a UK tour then going to America and, and I was just tired but I was ill and I started writing some of the I got to Nashville and said to my buddy in Nashville you know that verse that says uh, Jesus is a friend of sinners. And he says, I says, well, he's got a friend in me because I was cursing everything and tired and sick and couldn't see any way ahead. And, and so we wrote a song called Friend and Me. And um, from that song, I really just started writing songs about, about, about acceptance more than, than condemning. It was a an album, I think, of encouraging songs for people who were feeling some of these things, people who didn't feel good enough. And everyone on the album, pretty much everyone on the album, were people who were coming off drugs, who were struggling with alcohol problems, who, you know, I mean, just had people coming to me telling me really personal things and saying, you probably won't want me to play on your record. I said, no, you're exactly who I want to play. I had these teenagers which, which were fairly troubled, living in a fairly troubled country. Um, I remember waking up when I was about 11 years old and there was a tank outside my window and suddenly the country that I'd grown up in as a little boy was at war with guns and bombs and tanks and fires and and um, it, it's incredible how quickly you get used to stuff though, you know, you, you consider something to be the norm. Um, looking back on it, they were fairly awful times and they were not good years for me. But I... Um, at the age of about 16, I came to faith. My, my family weren't church people. They were good people, but they weren't church people. Although in Ireland, everyone, every child got sent to church. You had to go, so. But when I was 11, I just didn't go anymore. When I was 16, I came to faith. Um, really through a hippie, guitar playing hippie Christian guy who was just a nice guy. I mean, I, he wasn't preaching at me or anything. He just had qualities about him that that I thought I would like to have also. And I asked him why he behaved the way he did and reacted, because he reacted and behaved very differently to the situation in the country than all of my friends did. All my friends were kids that were just getting into trouble all the time. And, and this guy was just different. And that, that's what mark, marked him out. He was a nice guy, but he, he just didn't do the stupid things that we did. and. Uh, found out he was a, a Christian. And I thought, well, that's the thing then. That's what I need. I need to have some sort of faith journey. And from that point on, I, um, I started going to church and got involved in a tiny little Pentecostal church who were just great, ordinary, blue collar, working class people who really cared for the young people because there was nowhere to go. There was nothing to do. And, um, you know, there weren't things like, you know, these days they got big youth programs and all sorts of things. We didn't have that. The one place that there was stuff happening was in the wider church in Ireland. And lots of Americans, I mean, we didn't get rock stars, for instance, coming to Belfast in the 70s. They wouldn't come. But we did get 
some of your Christian rock stars like Larry Norman and Randy Stonehill and a lot of the guys from California, um, Love Song, Chuck Gerard, you know, and suddenly there was these rock bands. We'd never heard anything like it. So it gave me a whole new world to live in and I was playing as well and that really helped. Well, i have been playing music since I was 16. I moved to Scotland to study theology and in 1988 I became a pastor um, of a small church in the west of Scotland. When I was a pastor there I thought it would be good to have some sort of thing happening with the young people where we had a bit of rock music and a bit of maybe a bit of contemporary worship, maybe some theatre just to get young people involved, get them out in the streets, take them around the country a bit, you know, almost like a little touring group of young people. And so the Electrics was the rock band. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm all that comfortable with the term Christian music artist. I, I mean, I was just, my band when we started playing, although we came from a church, we just always played in bars and universities, and we were a bunch of Christians who played music. And I think that you have a worldview depending on what you believe. Of course. So there are things that I would be strongly opposed to as a Christian. Injustice would be one of them. You know, I think excessive wealth is another one that I would be opposed to. I'm not opposed to people making a buck and making a living and paying their rent and, you know, going on vacation and having a car. I'm not opposed to that at all. But, you know, this excessive wealth where it just doesn't seem to make any sense. So there would be just things I think I would try to have the mind of Christ on. As far as music goes, I think that the, the breadth of everything we sing about can be traced back to what we think and what we believe. That could be everything from singing about how beautiful a woman looks, as in the Song of Solomon, for instance, but as in walking through the streets of Milwaukee or seeing a, a cute waitress in a shop, you know, the 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 notion that things are beautiful, the notion that men are kind, the notion that people are hospitable, all stems from a belief that I have that somehow God works in all of it. And uh, most of my influences would come from the Celtic church who believed truly that there were blessings for every part of life, from putting on your shirt, to drinking your coffee, to lighting the fire, to the big things of your life, because they thought that Somehow, God was interested in every part of you. I kind of like that notion. Three seams in this garment, one garment I wear. Three leaves on the shamrock, from the soil that I tear. Three joints in my finger, one finger there. Bless Father, Son, Spirit, yet one God I serve. The three are the one, and the one is the three. Bless Father, Son, Spirit. Trinity.